Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to give it just a moment to allow for the rest of our participants to join, and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Hello, my name is Bobby Lynn Kekik. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the director for New Student Programs. I am so grateful to um, be here with you all today and really um, appreciate you taking some time out of your busy days to, uh, to join us. I want to provide some time for our amazing student leader who is joining us today to introduce herself. So I'm going to pause and invite her to introduce herself now. Hi everyone, I'm Mia Spencer. I'm an incoming junior and I'm from Madison, Connecticut and I use she, her pronouns. And I'm super excited to meet all of you guys in the fall. Wonderful. And Mia is one of our student coordinators. So she works with my team throughout the spring and the summer to help to coordinate all of the onboarding and orientation initiatives. So you may have seen um, some emails or some posts from her already, um, but you will definitely be interacting and your student will be interacting with her much more throughout the next few months and into the fall. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with what uh, you've signed up for. Where are we? What are we doing right now? This is one of our Falcon Live chats and we will be um, introducing our campus experts in just a bit, but what is a Falcon Live chat? Um, a Falcon Live chat is an opportunity for us to bring a little bit of Bentley to you. We're really fortunate to have a global community, a global campus with students and families all around the world. And so we try to make sure that we can provide this information in an accessible way. So some of you may be watching this live, but we are recording this session so that it is um, accessible for you to view at a later date or for those who are unable to join us now to be able to watch it at their convenience. We do post all of our recordings to Bentley Orientation YouTube channel. So please feel free to connect there for this recording and any future recordings. We have a variety of Falcon Live chats throughout the remainder of the summer on different topics such as funding and financing your students' education, academic success resources, technology, campus expectations. So please make sure that you are taking a look at that landing page with all of our um, Falcon Live chat links so that you can sign up for the content that seems most relevant for you. And just so that we can give one quick plug about where your students may be at in their onboarding process, we do want to recognize that um, now that we are in June, there are some deadlines that are coming up, um, some that may have just recently passed or that are coming up in the near future. So we do encourage you to be reviewing that new student guide that we sent out in May. There's a lot of details in there that will help your student to complete those tasks. And if there are any questions that they might have, help to direct them to the appropriate campus partners to get those answers. They will complete these tasks on their Bentley Connect portal. Um, so if they do have any questions, please just make sure that you are helping to, to share that information with them. And last but not least, we wanna really recognize that we provide these opportunities of Falcon Live Chats because we really do look to our, our family members, our support people, our guardians as partners in this experience. We recognize that your, your student is the student, um, but they have been with you for, for many years. And just because they are now joining our community does not mean that they're gonna stop going to you for, for questions um, or thoughts or advice. And so we wanna really be able to provide an opportunity to share these resources and bits of information with you. So if your student does come to you and ask these questions, that you're able to help to support and provide some of that information. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with today's topic, which is about living and dining on campus. We have three amazing campus experts who are gonna share some content. And then what I ask is if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please submit those through our Q&A button um, on your screen. We will get to those at the end and we will try our best to cover as much as possible. But if for some reason we're unable to get to that question during our time together, please know that you can always reach out to us via email and we'll continue the conversation. 
All right, I'm going to turn it over to Justin to get us started. Thanks, Biel. Thanks, Mia. Um, so yeah, I'd be happy to kick off introductions. My name is Justin Woodard. I use the he series pronouns, and I am the director of the Residential Center on Campus, and we cover um, all campus housing. So excited to be with you today and share a little bit more information. Um, and I'll pass that over to Sabrina. Hello, everyone. My name is Sabrina Cruz. I'm the Associate Director of the Residential Center here at Bentley, um, and I use the she or hers pronouns. Hi, everyone. I'm Kayla Eborn. I use the C series pronouns, and I am the Assistant Director of the Housing Operations. All right, so we're going to breeze through, um, I think, maybe eight or 10 slides, and then we'll certainly leave time at the end to get to the questions and answers. So if we don't get to it during the presentation, no, we won't um, start by you. We'll get to that before um, we wrap up for the day. But um, as BL said, this is uh, our living on campus presentation to help answer um, questions or if there are anxieties out there about um, you know, whether this is your third student or your first to go away to living on campus. We want to describe a little bit about who we are as an office, the culture um, and atmosphere of Bentley's campus. You can see some photos here, but um, being, you know, in a suburb of Boston and a, a mostly residential area, we've got a really safe, beautiful uh, residential campus. We house about 3,400 students on campus. Uh, the majority of students do stick with us from their first year up through um, senior year and graduation, uh, which is was, is great to have um, students seeking to come back. Our, our model of housing as you go through is really most uh, first year students will live in traditional first year style residence halls, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Um, and then as you move up, our philosophy is with each increasing year, you get some additional increasing responsibilities. So a lot of our sophomores and some juniors will live in suite style living, um, you know, multiple bedrooms in a unit with a kitchenette area and a common room. And then a lot of our juniors and seniors will really seek to get into apartment style settings, sort of the height of the responsibility, managing your own bathroom space, your own kitchen, cooking for yourself. Um, and so that's sort of the trajectory we have. We really strive to create a safe, civil, and inclusive community for um, students on campus um, and really hope that the living on campus supplements their learning in the classroom, that this is a great space. We've got a lot of um, lounge spaces and open areas for students to continue conversations, meet as, as um, you likely will see. There are a lot of group project-oriented assignments here uh, at Bentley. And so we really strive to ensure students have some breathing room to spread out, to meet with each other, um, and to enjoy their first year. I will say the three things we think most about in terms of, you know, what, why live on campus versus perhaps commuting to the university. So um, we believe that living on campus helps in three primary areas. One, it helps develop a stronger sense of self. So we know that when you're living with people, some that you've chosen, some that you may not know, um, you really have to dig deep and figure out what your values are, um, what your philosophy is, what you believe in, who are the types of people in your first year that you want to really connect with um, and, you know, make long lasting friendships with. So living on campus really helps you develop a bit about who you are. And our hope is that by the time that you're graduating, that you'll be able to really clearly articulate that to um, friends, family members, but certainly employers as as well. Um, the other big thing is building connections. And so one of the best parts about living on campus is that you're in close proximity to your peers and your class. Um, this is a fantastic way to develop um, initial relationships, uh, but not only with your fellow students, but with staff and faculty on campus as well. You know, we're a, a small community. And so I think it affords you the opportunity to really um, delve deep into relationship building with, you know, a, a wide variety of people on campus. Um, and then the last piece is a, a shared sense of belonging to a community. With that comes expectations, certainly, of how we expect students to live in the halls. We have a conduct process, and we'll talk a little more about our student staff who do some policy enforcement. But, you know, typically we expect a student may bump up against our conduct system at some point for low level conduct violations. Really the, the heart and crux of this is campus safety, ensuring that students understand what expectations they have living in the halls, 
Um, and then those that are, are living amongst them can, you know, uh, sleep, study, and live um, in a space that's amenable to them that's, you know, not interrupted by loud noise at two in the morning. Those are the types of things that we sort of strive to um, really create structure around to allow students, again, to, to engage socially, to have a good time, but also within reason um, to make sure that, again, where you're living can be a place where you can do what you need to do, sleep, study, um, rest. So a little bit about who we are and what we believe. We'll get into a little bit more about the structure, the support um, staff that you have available to you um, in your first year here. All right, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the support that we have available on campus. And so um, each of our residence halls have an assigned resident director. And so those are professional staff members who oversee kind of the day-to-day -day operations of the building. So they're gonna um, really know, you know, from a nine to five perspective, really know what's going on in the building, um, be able to kind of interact with students and also deal with more facilities concerns or, you know, other things that students may need. Um, and they also live in the building. So um, students may kind of see them, you know, around after hours, um, going to programs, interacting with students in that way as well. Um, they are gonna be, you know, one of the first lines of um, interactions for students. If they have something kind of going on and they wanna speak to an adult per se, um, that is someone that they can kind of turn to. Um, and again, uh, that can either be more casual, they kind of see them in the hallway interact, or it can be, you know, putting a meeting on their calendar and saying, hey, I would like to meet with you to discuss you know, concerned or mute you to discuss getting involved or whatever the case is. Um, we have our assistant directors, so our assistant directors are part of our central office team and they supervise um, the RDs. They also live in the buildings uh, around campus. And so another kind of touch point where, um, you know, hopefully the students uh, allows them to kind of feel um, more connected to the staff and be able to, you know, come to them if there's any kind of concerns and whatnot. Um, those again are some of the during the uh, during hours um, resources that students have available to them in the halls, but then we also have our administrator on duty, which is available essentially when business hours end until business hours begin the next day. So um, that would be someone that that you know if there's any kind of immediate concern, um, that that would be someone that the students can kind of turn to and um, be able to you know get kind of immediate solutions to their concerns um, or get like a this is something that can be done during the day and I'll connect with you, you with your RD, maybe you don't know them. So kind of triaging that way as well. Uh, we also have resident assistants that are gonna be on duty every night. And so our RAs have a designated space that they go in and they um, sit in. Um, in the first year area, those are in pretty central locations. And so students typically will know if something's going on and maybe, I don't know, my, my RA may not necessarily be there. Or I just need to talk to someone. They can go right down to the office and be able to say, hey, I have you know something going on. Um, can someone help me? And then there's also a number to call as well. And so let's say that they may, maybe necessarily don't wanna go down there. Um, they can call that number and an RA will be available to pick up the phone. And again, this can be as as simple as, you know, I'm, I'm locked out of my room. I'm not sure what to do. Um, to maybe, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit stressed. I have a, a, an exam in the morning and, you know, just would like to talk to someone. Um, they're definitely available for that. And then wider scale, we have our university police and our blue lights on campus. So university police are available 24 um, seven to be, interact with students and, and whatever they may need. Um, but then also uh, we have our blue light system on campus. And so um, around campus, you'll see essentially these um, blue kind of poles with a phone, um, or the ability to call out to university police. So let's say, again, anything's going on and whether it be I'm locked out, I don't have my phone with me, whatever the case is, they can, any student can very easily just go to that, um, go to that poll, click on the uh, the call university police and someone will answer. Um, and then we also have a similar system in the halls. And so let's say in the hallway, again, if you're locked out, you need to call someone, someone's going on, you just go to kind of, it's a yellow call box, um, go to it, press on the, um, press on the button and then university police will be on the other line. So a lot of different resources available to students, um, again, whether it be during the day or whether it be after hours. Uh, 
Um, one of the other things to elaborate a little bit on will be our resident assistants. And so um, RRAs, like I kind of mentioned, they live in every community around campus. And so typically they can be found either on the same floor or a floor over or a floor down or above. Um, it will be something that in their first pretty much day that students are here, we will introduce them to who their RA is and so that they can kind of see, uh, see their face and know who to kind of turn to. Um, the RA's responsibilities are really going to be to explain policies and procedures in the buildings, uh, facilitate any sort of programs, um, and assist you know, students in any needs that they may have, again, either at night or during the day. Um, and again, they will, the students will know who their RA is to kind of turn to. Um, the RAs are on duty in their hall from 7.30 until 8 the next day, essentially when um, the office is open again. Uh, they're available in the duty office, um, as well as, you know, students will see them around campus and programs and, you know, other ways as well. RAs are very involved in campus. And so it's a great way for students to kind of see, um, you know, I can be, I can be that, right? I can be someone who holds a job and is a mentor to students, but also be a part of our club organization. Um, one of the things that we also pride ourselves on making sure the RAs are aware of and have the skill set to help um, be involved in would be to kind of build community. So making sure that people feel that this is a home for them, um, mediate any sort of conflict that might come up. Um, for many students, this may be the first time that they're living away, um, living away, but then also living with others. And, you know, that's not family. And so um, if any kind of concerns come up or, you know, um, need for um, the help to kind of set some standards in their space or boundaries or whatever the case is, uh, the RAs are there to, you know, help mediate that. And then again, just generally be um, be a resource for for on campus students. Um, some things that students will you know will frequently come up in their first kind of year that the RAs are well versed on you know kind of how to handle um, would be you know questions related to I'm not fitting in, uh, maybe I'm sick, I'm stressed, I'm not sure what to do. Um, so definitely pointing them in the direction of you know normalizing like yeah it's it's normal to be stressed around this time of year because. There's a lot of exams going on or, um, you know, I'm sick. Here's where kind of the health center is, things like that. Uh, where can I get food? Where do I fix my computer? Where is this office? So we recognize that um, although they have, you know, some, some time here before all the other students get here, um, it's definitely a lot to be in a new environment and, you know, may not necessarily know where things are. And so the RAs can definitely point people in the direction where those things are. And sometimes even uh, potentially be like, you know, I'm on my way there. Why don't you, you know, come along with me, right? So. Um, definitely available for that. And then also talking through the, you know, the roommate, um, you know, how to kind of live with the roommate and um, how to, again, make sure that boundaries are set and, or how do I um, connect with my roommate, definitely available for that. And any of the other kind of what ifs, um, again, the students tend to generally get to know their RA pretty well since it is, you know, on their floor. Um, and one of the, you know, in addition to their orientation leader, one of the first students that they're gonna be seeing um, and so any of the other what ifs, we definitely recommend that if your student is coming to you with what ifs and you're not sure, um, you know, have them direct to the RAs or to the orientation leaders to get those um, questions answered. Um, so we offer here at Bentley three typical style dorm living. So we have Slade Hall, Miller Hall, and the Trees Complex. Slade and Miller are pretty much identical, but just in different locations on campus. And then behind tree, I mean, behind the slate is trees. Trees has about 520 students. So it does hold about half the first year class. Every single residence hall has um, common bathrooms. Um, they have a common kitchen, a laundry room and lounge spaces for students to hang out um, within the building. Um, Typically in Slade and Miller, there are double and triple bedrooms, um, as well as quads and a handful of singles. Um, trees is mostly doubles. Um, students will have the ability to preference their room type, um, but they won't be able to preference which dorm they live in. Um, so that would be just something to think about. Um, so, yeah. So a little bit of our defined community program. So our defined community program here at Bentley is an opportunity for students to um, have a dedicated space with a similar interest or passion or a similar kind of group that they're a part of um, to be involved with learning and kind of living in their in their space. And so um, in the first year era, we have six defined communities that are available for our students. Um, the defined community ap application can be found in their housing application. So it's kind of all in one. Um, 
one kind of process and it is due the same date that um, the housing application is due. So nothing necessarily needs to be done earlier, um, but if your student does have an interest in that, please advise them to you know fill that out prior to um, that date. Our, our first year defined communities are located in two separate halls. So that's gonna be Slade and Miller. Um, Slade houses our honors first year experience defined community, our blueprint community and our thrive community. So for the honors first year experience, um, that is a limited community. So it is available to honor students, but not all honor students live in that community. It is an option. So some students wanna live there and some students um, don't wanna live there kind of depending on what their individual interests are. Um, the blueprint community is really gonna be based in leadership and leadership development. So it is, it is typically a community for um, you know, our students who are really wanting to be a leader when they come to campus, or maybe do they just wanna try it out and see kind of what that's gonna look like for them. And then our Thrive community is based in um, wellness and, and taking care of yourself in all kinds of different facets, whether that be physical or, or mental health, financial, things like that. So that's gonna, those are our three in Slade. And then our three that are going to be located in Miller um, are Her Story Women Leaders of Today community. So those are for students um, who have a, a particular interest of being around other women um, and really focusing on um, developing leadership skills there. Um, our arts community, so that is one of the communities that um, is located or has a, a lounge located with it, which is really cool. And so that space has art supplies and has a piano and, and is a really cool space for the students in that community. Um, and then our first gen community is one of our newer communities that started last year. Um, it's had great success. And so those are for our students who identify as first gen students. You don't um, have to be in the university's first gen scholars program to be there. You can just identify as a first gen student and be, you know, be able to apply and be in that community. So again, another cool opportunity for students who hold that identity to um, interact with one another and be involved and um, you know, be a little bit more uh, invested in that particular theme. Um, the students in those, you know, six communities, they do um, arrive a little bit earlier than uh, the rest of their peers just to participate in some programming opportunities just with them. And then throughout the year, they also get the opportunity to do, again, some more attentional programs and um, trips and, you know, things like that. I'm really spearheaded by the students. So, you know, we're always open to if a particular floor has an interest in, doing a program um, and they're invested, like we'll, you know, work with them to make it happen and make them have that experience, so. Sorry, I thought I clicked it, but I didn't. Um, in terms of um, what's next, housing application and the housing contract. So right now, everything is live in your portal. If you do not have access to your housing portal, you're probably missing a few steps. So feel free to give us a call. Um, but hypothetically, if you're ready to go, you're gonna sign into your housing portal via the email you received from GA underscore housing. Um, that would be the best link to utilize. You're gonna to wanna to sign your housing contract, complete the application, and if any changes or questions, feel free to send us an email. This is due next Wednesday. So please, please, if you're interested in living on housing, living on campus, complete the housing contract and application before Wednesday. Um, and then in terms of your actual assignments, those will come out um, late July um, with more specific information. If you're interested in requesting a specific roommate, we highly encourage it, but if you don't have one, also fill out your housing application, but it has to be a mutual request. So what that means is you have to sign in and request the roommate. They also have to go in and request you, and it has to be mutual. Um, if you're not finding your roommate um, or your desired roommate, it's probably because they have not completed their contract. So nudge them, encourage them to also get in all their stuff they need um, as soon as possible. Um, oh, sorry, Justin, you go. <laughs> no, I think it was you, wasn't it? Okay, I got distracted. Um, in terms of first year meal plans, all first year students are required to be on a 304 meal plan. There is absolutely nothing a student needs to do. Um, we will just give them this. Um, that includes five meal trades. So meal trades, you can utilize at other campus food options on campus. And I'll also have 350 
do discretionary funds. So they can use that at the Falcon Market. They can use that at La Cava. Um, and then they would have 304 swipes that make it from September through December, and then it will reload. Um, and then basically the 921 is what our dining hall is. It's our main dining hall located in the student center. Um, it is a self-service entrance. It's all you can eat once you've swiped. Um, they have outdoor seating um, and they do work with all of our students on any concerns regarding dietary restrictions and such. So these are just some last um, important dates. So if your student is part of the Mosaic program, their move-in date, as Sabrina was mentioning, we have a couple pre-arrival programs. So Mosaic is the first. They'll arrive on Monday, August 28th. Um, for students that have signed up for that program, they'll receive more information from the Multicultural Center, as well as from our office regarding specific information on what the move-in day will look like. Um, if your student is accepted into one of the defined communities, um, their move in is Tuesday the 29th, so two days before the majority of the first year class will get here. Um, first year move in is Thursday, August 31st. Um, that will be our, our major move in day where the majority of our first year students are moving in. Um, we will communicate later in the summer more detailed and specific instructions to allow for um, that many people to be on campus, that many new students and their families. Um, we do stagger the move-in period. So we do ask that folks don't show up right at 8 a.m. Um, we'll give you the time frame in which you can show up. And that really, um, when folks um, heed those messages, really does help. Um, again, we're, we're not an enormous campus. And so we really try and control the traffic flow that day, which um, really makes it easier on the, the families that are on campus. We know moving in is both really exciting and can be very stressful. So we do as much as we can um, to ensure that the day um, is streamlined and well planned out. We will also, we have big giant moving bins that help students move belongings into their building. And we will also, um, and have for the past couple of years been securing some um, movers to assist students. So it's not, you know, we don't have one per student, but enough where if there are certain large items that are really heavy, um, they'll pitch in to bring things right up the stairs for folks, which has been really helpful. Um, and then classes begin on Tuesday, September 5th, um, right after the holiday weekend. And a reminder, I know it's really in the future, hard to be thinking about December right now, um, but the halls will close on Tuesday, December 20th at 5 p.m. Um, the majority of our students do depart for um, winter break. We have a small program where we can offer some um, housing options for an additional cost to students who are looking to stay for the month between December and when we reopen again in January. Um, but the majority of students do um, either travel home or spend time with friends or family um, during the holiday break. So just some important dates for your calendars. Um, and that is about where we wrap up with our slides. So I know that there are some question and answers coming in. So we may move from answering directly in there to maybe answering here for anybody that um, may have similar questions and want to get those answered. So I don't mind maybe sifting through and then Throwing them to either Sabrina or Caitlin or Mia and Bobby Lynn. Um, so let's see. So there's a question about our transfer student process. I don't know, Caitlin, do you want to take that one? Absolutely. So in terms of some of our transfer students who are possibly still on our wait list, um, they will not receive information regarding their contract or application until we have confirmation we can move forward with our transfer wait list. So he has not missed anything. We will get back to him regarding next steps. If you are interested in being a commuter, you are absolutely welcome to purchase any meal plan that any other student has access to. You can do the block 304. And we have smaller ones that are allowed for commuters as well. Um, they'll be able to do that in their housing portal at the end of July. Um, and then at the end of July. Yeah, and our, um, I mean, to give some hope, our, our, our expectation is that we will be able to manage some of the folks on our wait list. Um, what, it, you know, we appreciate the patience if your student is a transfer, if you're a transfer on the call. Um, 
students have until um, the end of this week to actually say who the students who went through housing selection this past year for the upcoming year have until the end of this week to um, remove themselves from housing without any penalty. And so sometimes a lot of students will secure housing just in case, um, but maybe seeking off campus locations, maybe thinking of transferring or taking a leave. And so the wait period, though um, anxiety provoking, we understand um, the longer we wait, the more vacancies do typically open up. And we're seeing that be quite consistent this summer with prior summer. So again, our hope is to get more information out to folks likely in July um, regarding the transfer waitlist program. So we have not forgot about you. We are committed to doing all we can to get um, folks access to housing if it's available. Um, there's a gender question regarding in the same room. So we will not, if students go in random, which the majority of students do. So if you're a student or a family member out there whose student has not secured a roommate yet, um, please don't worry. The majority of students go in random. Um, but of course, if you have somebody you want to live with, you can. We do not care if you're requesting someone else what the gender of those individuals are. We'd house anybody together that wants to be together. However, if you do go in random, we will assign you and match you based on your gender in the system. Um, the students have vegetarian meal options. So that's somewhat the benefit as Caitlin was talking about, about the various meal plan options on our um, meal locations. We have our all you can eat dining hall, which has a plethora um, of food options that you can choose from. And then we have stations all across campus where um, you can access uh, vegetarian meals um, more a la carte. And that comes off of your declining balance, your discretionary funds. Um, and then we do have, if folks look at Bentley Dining's website, um, Nicole Caliendo, we actually have a registered dietitian on staff who's happy to meet with students to show them around the various dining halls and help point them in the direction of things that they can eat if they have any, um, any dietary restrictions that, that would be um, worth looking into. Justin, I just wanted to quickly jump in. Um, I know we had a few questions about academic calendar. So I just went ahead and posted that in the chat. So if folks have questions about when the semester would wrap up or when the semester would begin again, please feel free to take a look at that chat and you can access it there. Also, if you're watching this as a recording, there is a direct link to the academic calendar on the orientation website, which you can access at bentley.edu slash orientation. Um, yeah, there's another question, transfer student uh, move-in. Uh, that would typically be on the first year move-in day as well. So that Thursday that we referenced. But again, if we're able to offer housing, we will um, offer that plus move-in directions to students as well. So we'll try to get every bit of information out there if we are successful in being able to offer transfer students housing. Um, there's a preseason athlete question in here. Um, so if your student is participating in any preseason, like volleyball comes to campus a bit early, um, we have a specific building we typically put preseason athletes in. If their assignment is in that building, we will try to get them to move right into where their academic year assignment is. Uh, both unfortunately and fortunately too. So Miller and Slade Hall, um, two of our first year buildings that Sabrina and Caitlin talked about are under construction right now, getting new HVAC units in one and brand new laminate flooring in the other. And so those may not be ready. So um, we do have some preseason athletes that will move into a temp space and then um, move into their permanent assignment. But once they're here, we won't make them move home and then come back, we'll just transition them into their academic year assignment. Um, let's see, I don't know, Sabrina, do you wanna take maybe the hall closing, um, how students navigate when to maybe purchase tickets home? Yeah, so um, the halls close, like I, I think we said the 20th, is that correct? Yeah, so the hall closed on the 20th. So um, it's really gonna depend on the student. The halls are gonna close on the 20th, but oftentimes depending on a student's academic kind of calendar and you know how their final schedule is gonna work out, um, they may be done earlier than that. And so typically in the first week of the semester, once students are getting their syllabus and we're kind of gonna list out you know what the final may look like and what are dates they should anticipate um, to need to be available on campus or for their final, whatever the case is. Um, 
it may be earlier again than that 20th date. And so it really is up to the discretion of the student. Um, if they, you know, if they're going to be done, let's say a few days before that, and they're like, I just want to head home a little bit early, they can absolutely feel free to do that. They do not have to stay if they don't want to. Um, the other additional piece is we recognize that there may be students that do have um, finals all the way up until the end. And so students do have the option to submit um, a, a late leave form. And so essentially what that means is that um, they are asking just to say until the next morning after the 20th um, to be able to, again, get their items packed and, and get a flight out then. So they do have the option to do that. And it's just important once students, once we're students are kind of aware of what their schedule is going to look like, that they're communicating and kind of figuring that piece out, whether that be communicating with you um, or buying their own kind of flight home, if that's something that they that they need to do. But really, it's going to be on the 20th at, at 6 p.m. And then they'll have until that next morning if they are requesting it. Um, they have until that next morning, typically about nine o'clock, uh, 9 a.m. to have exited at that point. So some students, again, may just need a little bit of extra time to kind of get to the airport. And if so, they just need to um, submit that form and we'll be able to get that um, allow for them to do that. Um, I see there's a question in there about um, mini fridge or um, micro fridge units that come with a microwave and fridge combined. Um, so we can add that into the chat. We have a company we work with. So if you're interested, um, feel free to take a look at that. Um, and then let's see, do the students have to move so yeah when halls close like sabrina was talking about at the end of the semester students do not need to move out completely we recommend against that actually we know it's a, a pain to move all your belongings in once so why do it twice uh, we do offer a room change process at that time though so some students who may um, be thinking about or have made a connection with a friend and thinking for the spring semester may really want to live with that individual we can't always accommodate it, but we do open up a process to inquire whether we could, and um, that would require typically students to move prior to break. But again, that's totally uh, an opt-in process. So um, certainly nothing they have to do. If they are staying in their main assignment through, um, they would say, stay put, take what they need. Um, and we lock and close down all the, the dorms in our university police. Um, department does pretty active rounds during break periods to ensure safety and security in all of the halls. Um, I see there's a question about if there will be another one of these related to um, more questions. We don't have another, I believe, Falcon Live Chat plan related specifically to housing. However, our email account, housing at bentley.edu, is um, a, a pretty wild account during the summer. We answer things probably between 40 and 50 emails um, a day in there. So certainly we will get back to you as quick as we can um, after this presentation. If you have remaining questions that weren't answered, feel free to pick up the phone and call. Feel free to email us. Um, we try to be really responsive knowing that um, there's a lot to think about to prepare for August. So certainly reach out. Um, there's a question about athletes. We do not, as a department, ask athletes to live collectively together. Um, some coaches we found would prefer their athletes to live in the same space. So that's why in the housing application, there's an ability, as Caitlin was talking about earlier, to request a roommate. Um, but we will not put athletes together without their permission. So it would have to all be done through the housing application. Um, so, uh, and Caitlin and I actually did meet with all of our um, coaching staff to go over this. Um, as we know, some of them do like to have their teams together. So if that's an in interest to the coach, the student just has to request a specific teammate. Um, otherwise, they would go in sort of, as we call it, sort of random into the housing selection process. Um, well, Sabrina, can you chat a little bit about the laundry facilities question, how that works and how students yeah. can do this? So our laundry facility is going to be available in every single building. Essentially, it has multiple um, washers and dryers. It is all um, done through an app. And so when you get to campus, you can also um, you know, potentially download it now. There will be an app that students will download onto their phone um, through Automatic Laundry. I believe it's called Automatic um, Connect. Um, from there, students will, you know, kind of set up their system to have um, a card attached to it so that they can upload funds when they need it. Um, and then also just essentially be able to scan the code that's on the washer. 
um, put on their phone, I want to start washer one. And then from there, the, the washer will, will start. Um, it is obviously separate wash and dry. Um, and uh, students also have the ability in the app to kind of know when it's busy. And so let's say, you know, for example, Sundays, everyone wants to do laundry on Sundays. And so they can, before they head downstairs with their laundry basket and all their items, they can look on the app and see, are there any um, actual spaces available? Are there any machines available before they kind of get down there? So, um, and then the app will also let them know when it's complete. So they don't necessarily need to kind of hang around downstairs. Um, they can put their laundry in and, and go back and, you know, finish whatever they're doing and come back later uh, to come get the items. Um, I believe it is one, 75 uh, per wash and dry. So 175 for the wash, 175 for the dry. And again, students will put that right onto their account um, by setting up again, either a credit card or a debit card or whatever onto the system. Um, and so uh, relatively easy to kind of utilize that service. Um, let's see, can we add money to discretionary meal plan? So if your discretionary dollar run out you can't add money directly to the meal plan but Mia I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about your experience with Falcon funds and how you've utilized those yeah definitely so you're able to add Falcon funds to your student ID card and that could be through like debit card or credit card and then you could use it as discretionary funds to buy like bagels from Cohen's um sushi or meals from La Cava, or you can also uh, ship out packages. If you have to pay for it, you can use your Falcon funds for that as well. Awesome. Thanks, Mia. Um, let's see, when can we move back in after the holidays? So we'll, we'll confirm that date typically right at the beginning of the fall semester. We'll confirm the return date for students um, to come back for the start of the spring semester. So um, we'll have more information about that in um, August, September. Um, and then what are the dates for winter session? Um, so again, you know, we'll close on December 20th. We'll have a small applicant pool for students looking to stay on campus over the course of the um, holiday break. So about four weeks. Um, we do not, there aren't meal services during that time. And so again, that I think cuts down on how many students will stay, but we will typically in November send out an application process to students so that they are able to um, let us know they're interested in remaining on campus during the um, winter break. Right before classes start, there are some winter intensive um, classes that students can take. They're about a week long, and so if a student signed up for that, that typically will um, also be able to get them into housing. I know the last couple of years, many of those classes have been done asynchronously um, or fully online. And so there hasn't been um, since post COVID really much of a need for housing. Um, but certainly if a student was taking a intensive class the week before move in, we would help them with um, housing for sure. Would it be okay for me to jump in and talk about the social media question? Yeah. Yeah. So I um, just wanted to share with folks. So there's a, a few ways that people can start connecting with um, other new students throughout this uh, next few months. So one way, and this is a shameless plug, but <laughs> if you would like to follow at Welcome Falcons, this is both for families and for students. We provide a lot of information through that platform. Um, there is updates about the different tasks. Um, there's ways for the students to be able to ask questions, kind of like what our families are doing today, um, utilizing social media. There's different themes that are going to be promoted there. We have a variety of resources linked within our profile as well. So it's a really great platform to continue to get information and also engage with the orientation team. Um, what I think um, our family member may be connecting or asking about with the social media um, platforms for students Admissions did launch a new platform um, this year called Zeme, so Z-E-E-M-E-E, -E -E -E, um, and that has been a casual way that some students have been connecting and interacting with one another. That is not something that is managed by staff or anything like that, but we have found that some students are going in there and connecting with one another. So if your student is interested, they are, you know, definitely welcome to take advantage of that. Um, we also know that students will create some um, some groups on Instagram. At one point, there was, I think, one that was not um, connected to Bentley in any way where they were looking for money. 
please know that anything connected to Bentley with social media is not going to be asking you to pay $3 to post a session or um, a blurb. So please know if your student is saying that, that is not um, legitimate. We would encourage you to, to focus on um, either Zimi or or one where there's a larger, larger group of students where people aren't requesting money for you to post a, a picture and information about yourself. Um, Mia, I don't know if you want to speak to any other ways that you personally connected with folks prior to Bentley or ways that you've seen some of our new students connecting. Yeah, of course. So when I was looking for a roommate, I joined, there was a Facebook group um, where uh, many students would just post a little blurb about themselves, their interests and their hobbies, and if they're looking for a roommate or just um, wanting to meet new um, students. And there's there was also an Instagram page. Um, I'm not sure if there's one for this incoming class, but I'm pretty sure there is. And it's also just like the Facebook, but more of our generation uses Instagram rather than Facebook. So that's why they created the Instagram as well. So you also post a blurb about what you're interested in if you're looking for a roommate or just some friends, um, and you get to post a few pictures about yourself as well. Yeah, and the last more shameless, uh, the last shameless plug I will give <laughs> is that we do have some virtual social programs throughout the summer. Um, so if your student looks on their um, new student portal, they'll be able to see at the very bottom there are new Falcon events. So highly encourage them to participate. Uh, we have a really good turnout and a really great way for for students to be able to connect with one another in those spaces as well. Yeah, and I think one of the last questions we see, and we'll give it another minute if folks think of anything else, is about undergraduate winter intensive sessions. So that's what we were talking about. Um, typically in January, Bentley will offer some. It's limited um, courses, but can be completed, completed in a week. It would be a full three credit class completed in a week. Typically it's nine to five in classroom time, Monday through Friday. Um, so if students are um, involved in that and there is an on-campus requirement to it, we would certainly assist them with housing. But like I said, in the past few years, there hasn't been an on-campus residency component to it. Um, the classes have either been done online or asynchronously. So um, more information to come, but certainly would help a student if they needed housing and um, also needed to be on campus. Um, I know one other question that was asked that I um, I typed a response to folks, but um, just so that folks know, if um, your student is an international student, they will actually arrive on the Wednesday. Um, the 30th. So just a, a heads up. I know that we were talking about some of those move-in dates. Um, new this year, we have some more specific programming for international students. We're really excited about that. Um, so if students would arrive on the 30th. Um, there'll be a welcome reception that evening, a shopping trip for any items that they may not have been able to travel with. And then we'll have some programming that Thursday morning, and then they will transition into the, um, the rest of the program. That, <clears throat> excuse me, that is centered around for the students. Um, so I know sometimes we will typically get questions if uh, family members do travel with their students, if they should stick around. Um, we always let people know, please decide whatever feels best for you with the understanding that the students will be incredibly busy from that um, Thursday through to Sunday. Um, on Monday, we have some optional programming for the students. So if they, if you're still in the area and would like to connect with them, you definitely can, but that Thursday through Sunday is incredibly busy. Uh, let's see, can you explain a little bit more about insurance for students? So I might pass if it's the health insurance piece. I don't know, BL, if you have, um, could share more about that. I can just briefly say we do, from the housing perspective, recommend that students seek either renter's insurance or um, talk with their homeowner's insurance and look into the policy to see if it actually, there are some homeowner's insurance policies that will cover the student even while they're away. So just good things to, to note. Obviously, there would be a rare occurrence or a rare need for that, but you know, managing 3,400 people in multiple buildings on campus that, you know, we'd be lying if we didn't say we've um, had small floods before, things of that nature. And so, again, just as a precaution, we do like to advise students look into that. Yeah, I'm happy to speak to the health insurance portion. Um, so this is something that Bentley does offer. Um, it is something that is required for our international students unless um, they do have an insurance that is um, typically, if it's like a diplomatic insurance, 
If you have questions about that and you are um, an international student parent, please just connect directly with university health plans because they will be able to let you know if the coverage that you have um, will translate here um, to what is needed in Massachusetts. For our domestic students, a lot of times um, if you are outside of Massachusetts, people will decide to select in. Um, I think sometimes there's some technicalities with HMOs that people might have in, in other states that might um, be challenging in navigating that. So what I would encourage is that folks take a look at, if you go to universityhealthplans.com and select Bentley University, that will bring up what our health um, insurance coverage is. And then you'll be able to take a look and see if your current health um, insurance covers more than that, or you feel comfortable staying with that, and it will cover your student in Massachusetts, then you are welcome to do that. You would just need to make sure that you are waiving the um, health insurance through Bentley. If you are interested in using the health insurance, then you'll go ahead and accept that, and it will cover your student from August um, forward. You will need to do that each year um, because we know for some students, they might use it for one year and they might decide not to for others, um, but it is a really comprehensive coverage and there's a lot more details on university health plans. So please definitely check it out there. Awesome. Um, transportation to, I don't know if Brittany wanted to take that one, transportation to stores in the area. Yeah, so during the academic year, um, we do have a shuttle service available on campus. And so um, that shuttle services can get students to a local kind of supermarket if they want to get things for their space or, um, you know, or just interested in you know doing something a little bit different and, and you know, going to uh, with friends there. So they can definitely um, utilize that. And then we also do have a shuttle. That shuttle also will um, go around campus. And so if they want to use that to get around they can most certainly do that. And then we do have an additional shuttle that will get students into Harvard Square. And so um, once students kind of get into Harvard Square from there, they can kind of take the tea to wherever they want to around the city. So whether that be, again, just to kind of hang out, go to the movies or explore Boston, they can most certainly do that. But if they wanted to, again, from there, get to like a Target or um, another kind of um, place to, to purchase items, they can do that via the shuttle and then from the shuttle onto the T. So definitely opportunities for students to get a little bit away from campus and to either get things that they absolutely need or again, just to kind of explore the area. And I would say a lot of students um, typically uh, will utilize that services to get into Boston and to, um, you know, go kind of hang out together. Yeah, and I know that we've typically worked with the bookstore for them to, to carry um, at the start of the academic year some essentials that folks might need in their residence hall spaces. So if, you know, again, if maybe it's like command strips or something like that, that you might need in that space, we have worked with the bookstore. So if, um, if people just need a quick fix, that's also a good option once people are on campus. Well, I see a question about um, international student status and so that the program really specifically is meant for students arriving um, to the U.S. maybe for the first time or the first time in a while to get them acclimated and help um, give them a buffer day before the rest of the community gets here. So I suppose if you're an international student already living in the States, um, we'd be happy to work with you if that's of interest. I think the program really was designed that to help ease the um, transition from maybe flying overseas or the um, to give students a little bit of time to acclimate before the actual orientation program starts. But if you're registered as an international student with the university, um, you will receive more information about the, the move-in date. Um, and we would certainly love to welcome you then. Yeah, and I'll also add that some of the content coverage will be around immigration and um, visa status. So I know that I have worked with some families um, that have identified that that content might not feel um, like mm -hmm. it's something that's applicable to them too. So as Justin mentioned, folks will receive that information. And if there are questions about whether it is a good fit or is necessary, please reach out. But for those students who are studying, um, you know, on a visa, we want to make sure that we can get you connected with our Center for International Students and Scholars, make sure that you are getting settled in and are able to participate in all that orientation has to offer. So I think we've got three last questions in here that we'll get to just to be respectful of time. But again, want 
folks to know, please re reach out to us, housing at bentley.edu, um, and we'd be happy to continue the conversation. We can quickly go through. So um, for students who may be um, domestic or living in the States, but maybe further away, we do have, and we'll um, please reach out to us via email. We do have an early arrival request process. We try to keep that very, very slim just to ensure our facilities team are working um, very quickly uh, to get the halls ready in time. And so, um, but if there is a, a realistic need to arrive in the evening, the night before, we could entertain that certainly, and there'll be a form to submit for that. Um, there's a question on what forms of ID folks should bring. Um, you know, it's really uh, up to you, students store what's in their room, um, how they would like to. So certainly a driver's license, some kind of form of identification that's formal, um, passport driver's license, regular state ID would be really helpful. Um, you know, up to you, a social security card, I'm not sure would need to be stored here. Um, it may be helpful to store some of those um, items or leave them at home, but again, certainly up to you. Um, and are there a lot of people moving in for the spring semester and will there be double roommates available? Um, we, so we do, I believe, have our um, class, uh, there's a smaller group of students that will move in in January and start um, the year then. Typically, that's a fairly small group, um, maybe anywhere between 25 to 45, Bobby Lynn, I don't know if that sounds about right. That sounds about right. I would say that that's also paired with um, some of our exchange students who will be joining us and then some transfer students as well. Yeah. So otherwise, it, it was lovely connecting with you. I know in a unique format, not really seeing you directly. But again, if you want to continue the conversation or talk more formally specifically, please reach out to us. That's our phone number. That's our email account. We will be active in there for the remainder of the summer to help um, ease any anxieties and answer as many questions as we can. But um, whether you're a family member or a student, we're really excited to welcome you into the Falcon family um, and are here if you need anything moving forward. I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank the um, members of our residential center staff who joined us today. Um, if you are viewing this as a recording, please feel free to reach out using the contact information presented in front of you. And of course, if there are questions about any other aspects of the onboarding or orientation experience, please feel free to reach out to us at orientation at bentley.edu, follow us at Welcome Falcons, and we look forward to seeing you all in the fall. Thanks so much. Take care.